So now we have our EBJ bridal panel, which I'm super excited. I have three of my beautiful past brides, if you can see them on here. I'm starting from my left. So Miss Valerie is first. She actually just got married on December 4th. Yes, at the Secret Gardens of Miami. So we're going to talk to her in the center. If you see him the same way I do, hopefully you have Miss Kayla. Uh, she got married also in December, on December 12th. Um, so, uh, and she got married at Deering Estates. So also a beautiful outdoor venue. And then we have Miss Caitlin, who got married in Charleston at Boone Hall, which is actually where they uh, filmed The Notebook. For those of you who are notebook fans, yes, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous wedding. And so she was at one of my destination brides. So we're going to go through this. And I think it's great because Valerie doesn't live here. She planned from afar. Um, <laughs> we have Kayla, who does live here, but had family coming in from afar. And then we have a full-blown destination. So uh, for everybody, actually, because I think no, nobody was local. Yeah, we all just, we were all there just having a great time. So my first question, I'm going to ask Valerie, I'll start with you. How was the planning process for you? So it was definitely overwhelming for me at first, but um, you definitely helped keep me organized and on track. Um, your tools are amazing. They're very user-friendly. Um, they're totally worth it. And it took the stress out of planning and really made it fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, we do use a portal system. It does keep everything super great and organized, as you all know. Uh, but for those uh, newer brides who are now using it, I think they understand it is my first love. Just don't tell my husband that. And I think that without it, I wouldn't be able to survive. So uh, Isle Hunter is the love of my life. All right, Kalo, how was the planning process for you as a whole? Now, and not just with me, it could be about anything. I mean, even like, you know, what did you deal with outside, you know, besides for the pandemic, you know, besides for a, a worldwide pandemic, you know? Yeah, um, honestly, I hated it. <laughs> I'm so thankful that I hired you because I really hated it. Um, and <laughs> I'm glad that at least I was the highlight of it. I don't even know. Honestly, like the venue and everything, planning that part was fine. Um, planning a wedding where in the middle of a pandemic where your family is from out of town um, was just a nightmare. Uh, especially with coordinating with all the vendors. Thank God I didn't have to actually move my wedding. But, you know, like once the pandemic hit, and it was like, okay, well, are the vendors still going to come? Is it still, you know, everything ended up working out fine. And honestly, my favorite part is that at the end, Jess just gets all of their information and she speaks to them. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I do all of it. But for yours, which I found um, even more interesting, because and I always want to mention this, family always makes things harder. That's just like, that, and, and I can't take that stress away, you know, right. and I think that that's one of the biggest things I realized as a bride was I found my job easy. I found being a bride pretty hard. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is tough, you know, because you want, you don't want to let anybody down and your family is all super involved. And then you have, you know, your mom on one side, your mother-in-law on the other side. And then all the other women who have opinions and you're just like, how do I do this? And so I think that's the planning process in general. That's difficult. And then for you, Kayla, because we did yours in the pandemic, um, we also had a scare that we might even have had to move her venue. Her vendors were totally on board. I don't think not one vendor was like not ready to do your wedding, but the venue. And so like, what was it? Was it, oh. was it two weeks, a month? A two, month weeks. two weeks. I think before? it was like two weeks before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I start calling venues and I'm like, we are going to have this wedding, Kayla. Do not worry. We are having this wedding. And I'm calling all of these venues and I'm like, we're going to make it happen. And she's like, hell yeah, we are. Even if we got to do it in the backyard, we're going to make yep. it happen. And I was like, hell yeah, that's what we're going to do. But we did it. We didn't have to do any of that. No, it was perfect. It, it was, was perfect. Just a scare. It was just a scare. Um, so Caitlin, then tell us how was the planning process for you? So we had, we were pre-pandemic, luckily, God bless, um, but um, we had a year and a half engagement. So when we first got engaged, it was like, 
oh, this is fun, blah, blah, blah. Well, a good friend of ours, Jeff and Heidi, who also just planned their wedding, which is how we got recommended to Jess, um, we wanted to wait to start planning anything till after theirs was over because both of them were in our wedding party. Um, so we didn't want to stress them out with our wedding until theirs was over and they were, you know, happily married. So we uh, had a little gap where it was like stress free. And then all of a sudden we started planning and it was like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? What are, where are we going to do it? And just thoughts swirling everywhere. It was completely stressful. Like I can't even imagine doing it in a pandemic because pre pandemic, it was hard enough. Um, finally, when we got Jess, though, I think the number one tool that brought me at ease was the timeline. God bless the timeline. Um, and I remember even texting you and calling you at times and being like, oh my God, I need to do this. And you're like, Caitlin, you are three months ahead of schedule. Look at the timeline. Like you don't even need to be worrying about this right now. You're way ahead. Chill, relax. We're going to worry about that, you know, in three months when that's going to come up on the timeline. So the timeline was great. I think one of the other biggest things that helped us the most was, um, um, the, the guest list, having that all planned out, um, through your app. I mean, those two alone were well worth it. Um, and then just having you there the day of coordination, getting my crazy family. I mean, I know everybody's family is crazy, but just getting them all in line, seeing you at the rehearsal, being like, you go here, you go there. I was like, oh yeah, this day is going to be perfect. We're going to have zero issues because right when we got there for the rehearsal, she was like, with her clipboard and knowing exactly who was going where. And I was like, okay, it just put me so at ease knowing that, okay, I'm getting married on this day. And that is my number one concern. And my number one priority is getting married. I don't have to worry about anything else. Like everything else is already planned way, way ahead of time. So it honestly, the only stressful part was before we got you. And then after that little pockets of, texting you, oh my God, what do I do? And then you saying, hey, you're good. You're way ahead of schedule. You got this. Yeah, I, uh, I, I love the full confidence in me, but I, I think it's just important, you know, like, and it's not just that, like you mentioned, um, you know, putting in the time with the guest list. I think that's so important at the beginning. And a lot of people sometimes don't do it. And then you realize how important it is when you get to the end. And you're like, and this is why Jessica was on my butt about doing this. And I'm like, yes, because if not, when you get to the end, it gets really intense. Yeah. And it's intense and like the craziest way because you're getting ready for this wedding. Like the wedding is here and you're still having some, you know, finagle all these guests. And, you know, for um, Valerie and Caitlin, yours, I think were, you know, it was basically the same people who RSVP'd went, but for uh, Kayla, we had so many changes last minute. And it, it got to a point where I was like, girl, you're just going to have to leave it because you're not going to stress anymore about it. You're always going to have dropouts. We always do. And this is same for your wedding, same as their wedding. I mean, you're always going to have dropouts at the end. But this, for yours, it was like really intense and forthcoming. Yeah. I was printing new table sheets literally the night before my rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. And you, you're lucky that the way that you did it made it accessible for you to be able to change it. Because in some cases, we do the cards or we do the seating chart, and that's not accessible. But the way you did it was great. So uh, second question, Valerie, what would you have done differently with the planning process? So we're still in planning. I would say definitely take your advice on those weekly and monthly phone calls. Um, you definitely mentioned how quick things go getting closer to the date and there were certain things like yeah you know I'll get to it I'll get to it like that timeline was the saving grace of the entire planning process um, there were certain things that I let go way past the due window and it definitely Catch kind of messed me up towards the end yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. That packing list, like that was, I was writing that three days before my wedding. It was intense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that for you. And I, for the good thing with Valerie is that we were really ahead of schedule with your planning process from the beginning, you know, and, and we were always ahead. And then at the end, I always start telling you, I'm like, it's going to catch up on you. It's going to catch up on you. And it does. And then everybody's like, oh my God, you were so right. I'm like, it always does. Because it even did for me too. Even knowing that it catches up on me, it always does because you don't realize all the little things that you have to do right before and how crazy it gets right before, especially the week uh, of the definitely. Um, But 
I would definitely say just just stick to your advice and your suggestions because it went exactly how you said it was going to go. Um, and you've been doing this for so long and you know this business so well. So I would definitely just listen to Jess when she tells you things um, and go off of that timeline and, you know, keep stay organized. I, I should have stayed just a little bit more organized. But other than that, I mean, everything was great. Yeah. And it's, it's not easy to stay organized. I know for everyone, you know, even sometimes for me, which I would consider myself an organized person, you know, it's hard to sometimes um, keep everything organized, but the checklist, and I think you guys called it the timeline, which is, it is because I have the checklist on time frames, but the checklist is key, you know, and I've made that from scratch so that to make sure that nothing is forgotten, no, no detail. So uh, Kayla, what about you? Um, well, one, not get married during a pandemic. Um, you didn't like it. I loved it. No, I'm joking. It actually turned out so well. I thought um, it You okay. had less people, but we had so much fun. Right? Yeah. But it wasn't even like less people. Like, I don't even want people to think that you had a small wedding because you didn't. <laughs> it was not the size that we had originally planned and it was still large. It was exactly. We were planning for 200. We ended up with 100-ish. Yeah. Know? Like. It wasn't like it was small. I don't want people to think like, oh, she ended up with a 30, 50 person wedding. No, no, no. We had a wedding, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but honestly, I would say details, you know, like they're at the end of the checklist, but look at them at the beginning and start thinking about them because I ended up in a position where I didn't order my welcome sign. Mind you, during a pandemic until like two weeks before the wedding. And I wasn't even sure it was going to be here before my wedding. And I was like, well, we're just not going to have a welcome sign. And, you know, like table numbers, those kinds of things, start thinking about them earlier than, than you would think that you should, because those are the details that really stress you out towards the, like, as you get closer to your wedding, that don't have to, if you think about them before. Yeah. Um, and I will second, um, what Valerie said about just uh, staying on time with, with Jess's checklist, because we would have calls and Jess would be like, um, you still haven't done these like eight that we talked about last month. So how about we do those? And then I'll give you more. So I think that, I mean, it was like a really stressful time. <laughs> um, but you know, we got it done, but really I would think about the details sooner because yeah. those are the things that stress you out as you get closer to your wedding that don't necessarily have to. Yeah, because then you get to the end and then the things that you wish you would have spent more time on, you're so stressed that you just say, F it, you know? And you're just like, it doesn't matter. I don't need a welcome sign. And like this whole time you were like dying for one and yet you didn't get it because you know you wait to the last second. And right. you know, the checklist is built on purpose to give everyone enough time to do all of these things. So I, uh, I definitely did not know you ordered it two weeks before. I'm glad I did it um, because I would have been stressing for you. I literally got here, I think on like Wednesday. Don't do that for the life of you guys. If you hear anything, don't do, me... <laughs> don't do that. All right, Caitlin, what would you change from the planning process? Uh, well, it's funny because I'm listening to you guys. And, and what's funny is like leading up to our wedding because we had so much time to plan it. I would take full days off of work and I would write in my planner, like plan wedding. And by noon, I would have nothing else to do um, because I would get my call with Jess and then everything would be done. And I'd be like, okay, well, I thought I had more to do today, but my timeline says all these things I thought I had to do, I don't have to do for a couple more weeks or a couple more months. So I guess I'll go get my nails done or something. Um, so I think the opposite spectrum over yes, here, I really <laughs> like that. And, you know, pre pandemic, um, yeah. if I could go back and change anything, it would be honestly, and the husbands may not like this response, but adding more, um, the husbands I, aren't on here. Well, what's interesting is looking back at the budget, I'm like, I don't actually remember how much I spent. And I think probably a lot of people may think that, um, I don't remember exactly what we spent, but if looking back, there are a couple things I would have added, like maybe a champagne when people walked in, um, for the reception or for the, um, actual ceremony. Cause that's one thing I think would be cool is if I went into, you know, a wedding, I would want, you know, some champagne before the actual wedding started. So I could deal with that. Yeah, a little time. like like y'all had both <laughs> mentioned details, 
the little bitty details, like little things that really nobody else notices, but you know that they happened and you really wanted them to happen. Yeah. Um, I think are really important. So yeah, those little things. And honestly, looking back, it's like, well, it's just one day. Do you really want to spend that much for one day? Absolutely. That's the biggest day of your life. You will never look back in my opinion and think, oh, I wish I hadn't, you know, gotten the getaway car or done this or done that. Like every single little detail we added I'm glad we added and looking back, if I could add more little details, you know, I would have. So I definitely think the little details are really what makes it unique and personal for you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I completely agree. And, and there's things, you know, that I tell people through the planning process, you know, I'll always be like, I'm like, eh, you don't need to spend your money on that. That'll make a difference, you know? And then there's other things where I'm like, no, you need that, that, that makes a difference. Like, you know, and I'll go through those things, especially, you know, once I get to know your style, your vibe and what you're doing, like we'll go through different tips and different things. Like, yes, you need that. No, you don't need that. If you have the money for that, I'm not going to say that'll be bad. That'll be great. But if you don't, then you don't, you know? And obviously I try to be as conscious as I can with your budgets. You know what I mean? But I know sometimes we all go over budget on a little thing here and there. And sometimes we don't even record the things that we go over because it doesn't matter. Our husbands are not on this, as we all have talked about. Um, so I don't think to this day my husband knows how much we spend on things. I The number I tell him, I remember. The number I actually spent, I don't remember. I don't remember. I have no It's better to not I remember. I had a friend saying, how much did you spend on yours? I was like, I don't actually know. I mean, I could look it up for you. But yeah, <laughs> do we even want to know that? Like, again, like, why? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, all right. Third question, ladies, um, leading up to the day and the day of what are some tips for current brides? Valerie. Um, I guess it'll go back to what I was talking about earlier is just staying on track and not leaving things for the last minute because time goes by so fast. And, you know, like the other girl said, those details are everything and, you think you have all this time towards the end and everything just moves 10 times faster. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, it it is. And I I think, you know, if you heard me say it or you didn't, but I mean, I'm so huge where I tell people, I'm like, and and you, you you three tell me, right? Because of course I don't remember half the things I say, but did I tell you like the week of the wedding, don't plan anything? I told, okay, perfect. I mean, I I try to say it. Yeah. I'm like, don't plan anything the week of the wedding, because guess what? Things just come up. <laughs> and yeah, I remember I, I had an issue the day before the wedding with the caterer and oh, it yeah? just ruined half of my day. And there was half of my day gone. But I solved it. And I, <laughs> and I had all these other last minute things to do that should have been done well before. Yes, but I did solve the problem. You did. You definitely did. Um, definitely I can't. Cool. I can't. I can't like enforce anymore to trust you and just trust your process and do as you say because it went to the teeth. Yeah, I. Uh, I do consider. You know, my husband's always like, and like he'll always ask me, he's like, "How did the wedding go?" You know, that's his like usual question. How did the wedding go? And I'm like, "Oh, babe, can you imagine?" Like, I'll tell him X, Y, Z happened. I'll go through all the crazy things, and he goes. But like, did it go well? And I was like, of course it went well. Like, what kind of question is that? You know, but let me tell you about the stuff that didn't go well. <laughs> I can't tell anybody <laughs> the stuff that didn't go well, right? That's, those are like my personal backstories, which one day I'll make memoirs of a wedding planner. That's my next Instagram. I, um, you know, and I'm just like all the ideas and all the crazy things that, that have happened, you know, doing this. So, all right, Kayla, tell us, leading up to the day and day of, what are some tips for brides? Honestly, and this is going to be like the hardest thing, relax and don't, don't let people like mess with your mood, the closer that you get to the wedding, because family members start coming into town and your bridesmaids are getting anxious and everything's like trying to get ready, you know, for the day, just, just relax. I mean, luckily, like my husband is super chill. So whenever I, yeah, whenever I would freak out, like he'd just be like, hey, it's gonna be fine. like, what else is there to do? We've already planned the whole thing. And you're like, yes, but also no. Yeah. Um, That's guys for us. 
Yeah. Just relaxing. I think taking some time for yourself and trying not to please everybody as you get closer to the wedding. And I will second what Caitlin said on the last question, because the one thing that I wish that I really did at my wedding that I didn't do was wrap the dance floor. So you have the money for it, do it because we had money left over and I was so mad that I didn't do it. I said it. So. But Kyle, Kyle was the one who didn't, who didn't want it. And that's Kyle didn't care. That was the thing. He was like, I don't care. We should have done it. That's like my one regret. I don't care. I don't care means do it. I know. <laughs> It does it does no I'm kidding but yeah no I, I get it it's the, it's the small if it's something that you think and this is how I always I try to pose the question because it happened to me at mine if it's something that you feel like you're going to regret later then just do it it's not worth the, the in proportion whatever it is the money that you're thinking of that in that moment in proportion to what you spend okay it is not worth it okay you don't want to look back and be like at every single picture because guess what all of your reception pictures are all in the same spot. So now you look at every picture and you're like, I should have wrapped that damn dance floor. I should have wrapped that dance floor. I should have wrapped that dance floor. You know, and then, and I get it because something happened to me very similar where I'm like, oh, how did I not do that? You know what I mean? But it's, that's what happens. You know, you, you get caught up sometimes and, and things like that happen. I agree. All right, Caitlin, what would you have a, or sorry, leading up to the day and day of, what are some tips for brides? Um, so I would definitely say the number one is just, enjoy being engaged it's a short window of your life that you get to be to go from being the girlfriend to the wife and it's you know whether it's um a year and a half two years however long it may be that you're engaged it's really not that long of a time in the grand scheme of like life so yeah. enjoy being engaged because it is a really fun time um having used a wedding plan it's like all the things i thought i should have been stressed about really were handled. So all of the stress I put on myself, other than obviously to get in shape, other than that, like it was all taken care of. So there was really nothing I needed to go out of my way to do. It was all kind of handled. Yeah. So I would just say, enjoy being, you know, engaged, enjoy that time they have together. Um, try not to get pregnant and, you know, Woo! Good advice. We, we spend a good amount of our life trying not to get pregnant. And then we spend this window where we're like trying to get pregnant. Yeah. I was talking to my friend about yeah. this the other time when you're like, you spend your whole life, you know, at this point, right? Like trying not to get pregnant, don't get pregnant. And all of a sudden you're like, and then this, I don't know how funny this topic is or not. Maybe we should switch topics, but it's true. Then you're like trying to get pregnant and you're like, please happen. Like why? We're in that boat right now. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right. Other, other tips that I think are important, you know, thinking back as myself as a bride and you mentioned a little bit of it is, you know, the, the getting in shape, the teeth whitening, the, what you want to do with, I mean, I mean, crazy things, your hair color, your nail color, like spending. And I know these all sound absolutely crazy when I say them, but like spend the time to figure it out. Like I knew, and I know this sounds crazy, but I know that I love my hair color three months after it's done. Yes. That's a long time you know, but that's this balayage thing takes some work, you know? And so I knew that I had to get that done at the appropriate time. So I would love the shade and it would match, you know, my extensions. Cause you know, I ain't got that. I ain't got that much hair. It looks like I do, but I don't. And so I had to make sure that it all matched correct. And that's something that I did. You know what I mean? Same thing for my husband. I told him, I go, you don't like your hair cut the day, before, like the day after. So you gotta get your hair cut. He likes it three days later whatever right nobody cares about guys um we do but we don't so you know I've told him I'm like plan out your hair if that's what you think you know what I mean so like those kinds of details the getting in shape is something I feel like I constantly talk to brides I don't know about if it's getting in shape changing your lifestyle getting, getting on a diet I don't care what you do but whatever you want to do to start it with enough time you know not oh shit my wedding's in three months I gotta try to lose 10 pounds you know I will second that um, because I had to juice for four days before my wedding to make sure that my dress fit. I didn't tell you. Um, I literally didn't eat for four days. It zipped up. We got it. We got it. 
But let me tell you, that pandemic weight was real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you had other factors. Again, so, like they said, plan ahead. Uh, make sure that you're dressed fit. Yeah. Um, okay. Just, just yeah. do all the things that you want to do. You know? Like if you, if you, when you get engaged, we have all these dreams and these thoughts, you know what I mean? And it's like, do them. I know that sounds absolutely crazy. I'm just saying, but that's it. Like, do it. Like, if you're going to do it, do it. If you want to lose weight, you want to change your lifestyle, you want to do this, you want to do all of that. You want to get in your dress. You want to do whatever, then do it. Because the reality is that those pictures are going to last you forever. Like my kids are going to look at those pictures and that's it. That's me in my wedding dress. So if I don't like it, then I'm screwed, (laughs) you know? And so keeping those things in mind, as crazy as that sounds when I say that. So last question. So I'm going to start with you, Caitlin. Catch you by surprise. If you could change anything the day of, what would it be? Um, like starting the morning of? No, just day of the wedding, right? What, what, if you could do anything, if you could change anything, let's, let's even make it broader. Like if you could change anything or tips for the day of, I mean, like day of stuff. Let's go with day of. Okay. Um, don't get drunk at your rehearsal dinner. I got to say, uh, no, it's okay. If you get drunk, just don't, don't do overexert it. yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't get too drunk. Cause you will wake up bloated and it's not going to feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, we did the older we get, the harder it is to recover. We keep yeah, we forgetting that bar shoot, like a little panty shoot that morning. And I had, I had been working for a, about a year for that, uh, figure that morning. And yeah, it was all wasted on, on the champagne gut that I had that next day. So don't do that. Um, if I could change anything the day of, I don't know, it's pretty perfect. Maybe ha- drinking more coffee that morning. I don't know that day kind of in my mind. And I don't know if it's just looking back on it. It was perfect. It was such a good, perfect day. If I could say anything, it would be to just be in the moment more and not think about what's happening next and to just be there. Yeah. Um, I would probably say that's the biggest thing because looking back, I really wish I had maybe, um, I don't know, gotten more photos with my little sister or with my mom, like more candid pictures. We had plenty with our photographer because Jess had us make a list of all the exact photos that we wanted with them, but getting more time with them individually um, that day would probably be my biggest thing. So just making sure you're really um, present there in the moment very present and I know you mentioned that a lot before Jess yeah but you know it's so important because you're you're not present sometimes you're so worried about everything else and just like knowing like hopefully you have myself as a planner because then I can guarantee it right but if you don't you have somebody else like letting know like it's okay you know like but who were the people who executed my wedding my staff you know what I mean and I got to the day and I was like you know what it doesn't matter you know, and, and I was scared of that. I was like, how am I going to be on the day of, you know, am I going to micromanage the, the shizzles out of this? Because that's what I do. Or am I just going to sit back and relax and be a bright? And I was, I was able to do it. Um, and I'm proud because I didn't really think I was going to be able to, but my husband was also like, you know, you need to be in the moment. And, and I think that that's so important because it, you, the day flies by so quickly that if you're not present, you're going to miss out, you know? Um, a, a tip that I wrote down while you were talking was do what you would normally do. So like you said, have more coffee. Maybe that's something you normally, I would say, do what you normally do. Like if you normally have breakfast, then have breakfast. If you normally don't have breakfast, you probably should still have breakfast. That's probably a bad example, but you know what I mean? I'm just like, do what you would normally do. If you normally drink a lot of water, then do that. Because if you change, especially things that are dietary, then you won't feel right. You know, especially things like that. So I, I, I think that that's really important on something that you that you touched on really quickly. Um, Kayla, go. Um, not have it rain. No, I'm kidding. That was like the most stressful thing was when Jess came to the room where we were getting ready and she would like had this weird look on her face and I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And she it was literally pouring. My whole wedding was outside. It ended up being perfect though. Um, so honestly, the place that I could give is that nothing is going to go exactly the way that you planned it, right? Like your day is not going to be quote unquote perfect, but at the end of the day, it's going to be perfect. Exactly. Um, you know, so really just enjoy it. Enjoy the time that you get to spend with your girls and with your mom. And, you know, um, one thing that I would say, like, if you're close to your dad or your brother, I had my dad and my brother come to the, to the room while I was getting ready to say hi to them. Those were some really amazing photographs. Yeah. 
uh, dad and brother. They're always really nice for sure. So those are really great. Uh, your wedding planner in advance so we can calculate time for that. You did. I'm just tell, I'm saying it for the future because I always have some girls. Oh my God, I would love to do first look with my dad. I'm like, girl, we are behind. But yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. And don't let the time stress you out because I felt like I was really stressed out that morning, um, you know, about, about time and being late and all of these things because the hair girl was a little bit late and the food was a little bit late and don't let it freak you out. Like everybody like just builds in a buffer. I was about to write that down. Mm -hmm. Just Don't let it worry. You just really, really enjoy the day. Um, Jess will get you where you need to be at the exact time that you need to be there. Um, and, and enjoy it. You know, like I texted my husband that morning and I was like, babe, it's raining. And he was like, here it's you. Fine. we're getting married today. Like relax. <laughs> you know, and it, it rained at my wedding and that's what I always tell people. And it was the one thing I didn't want to deal with was rain. And it's the yep. one thing I got, you know, and, and that's how it works, you know? And so just knowing that that's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, you just have to plan for, you have to have a plan B, which for you, you know, we had opted not to have the plan B, um, nope. but luckily it was just a shower. And so, yeah, you know, I had to come to you because when, and the only reason I came to you and I want to make sure it's clear to everybody, it's not because we couldn't handle it, but financially it was going to cost you a little bit more because right. we had to change some things. Typically I wouldn't come to anybody unless I have to. So if I, if something financial is definitely um, obstructing the day then you know there's really no choice I have to come to you at that point but yeah. I, I already had it solved by the time I went to you so that that helps in any way yeah. and you were like look um this is what they're gonna do and this is how much it's gonna cost and I was like I don't care just yeah. get it <laughs> which wasn't even a lot considering yeah. it was four hundred dollars to change all the linens and all the cushions and everything that had gotten wet and we were able to do it we're all within the same same time span you know yeah you know, pretty incredible. I would like to, I would like to tell people, I'm like people don't understand what happens behind the scenes, but that stuff is hard. No. And I will add, um, that Jess did move an entire boat that was going to be in my ceremony. How could I forget that? I, have I was magical powers. Literally two minutes before I was walking down the aisle, I was like, Jess, that boat, that boat's going to be in all my pictures. And she moved it. <laughs> these are the things that happen to me guys this is why i need like some sort of memoirs of a wedding planner literally freaking out there's this huge boat in this gorgeous like view that they're supposed to have and i have to figure out how to move a boat that's i mean how far away was that a mile oh my god it was far yeah, yeah. i had to move this one boat that's like a mile away in like a of like, five minutes how do you move a boat like that what did you do? Did you throw I had magical out? powers. Yeah, I really, I really feel like sometimes I have magical powers. I think or she something. lately like asked them like hey, like her her girl like yelled like hey um my like can you guys just move. Yeah, we actually radioed it in to yeah we radioed it in to the well I have thankfully I have the direct line to those people called the people from Deering Estates had it radioed into the security who drove his golf cart over there faster than fast and asked the people to move. And we still started the ceremony on time. Yeah. I mean, like, like, I don't even, I, I, and your mom, I was it your mom or Kyle's mom. I can't remember. They were like, you figured it out. You got to, it's moved. And I'm like one minute before it was moved. And I was like, all right, we're starting. We got this. <laughs> the crazy things that happen. So yes. And Valerie, you tell me. Well, I just want to say I'm convinced that Jess is definitely part magician because she makes things happen. <laughs> well, definitely two things about my day. Um, I'm definitely going to second you all on talking about really just being there in the moment and just favoring it all in and just like taking a moment to just appreciate it and embrace yeah. everything that's happening because it went by so fast. And the way that Jess said that do what you normally do I was dying the moment that I walked into my venue because I hadn't eaten all day. So I was just like, I felt like I was in pass out. I mean, she got me food before we even started pictures, which was lovely. Um, but I had like three layers of clothing under me. So I was dying. Um, but definitely being in the moment. And just like you had said, like, do what you normally do. I should have trusted myself. I am the last person to leave at parties. And I believe I had a six hour wedding I definitely wish that I would have given it a couple hours towards the end like added on a couple of hours mm -hmm. um but that's pretty much it 
Um, oh, and the family thing. I let my mother get to me and it completely ruined my wedding night. I thought I thought we were going to mention first, you know, and, and it happens, you know, it happens. And you know why, you know, and it, it pained me for you because that happened at mine too. Like I remember looking at my mom and I was like, hey, mom, it's my wedding day. Okay. You had yours. And the fact that you even have to say that to a, to a mom, you, you know, it hurts. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, I, I even remember I had to say it to your mom. I was like, was it your mom or your mother-in-law? One of the two, I had to look at them and I was like, and they were both like, I'm telling you, like freaking out. This was like bad that morning. And I had to look at one of them and I was like, I think that we should really be focused on Valerie right now. And I think it hit her, thank God. And I didn't have to say anything else. And then we were able to focus on you. But yeah, you know, yep. it, it just came into my just came into my Airbnb getting ready and she saw me on my phone and she's like, Well, what are you doing? And for sure, my phone was taken from me at 10 o'clock in the morning and I did not get my phone back till well after my wedding. So sounds, it was sounds very, okay. very, very frustrating. <laughs> um, Jess, I want to add one more thing because sure. Kyla talk about this all the time. Your wedding day goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. You get to the next morning, you wake up and you're like, that was literally two seconds. Yeah. So really like take time, soak it in, like look each other in the eyes, really take time to just like be together because people are coming up to you all the time and people want to say hi. And you really like, I mean, it, I can't even express to you. And people say this all the time, right? And you don't understand until you're on your wedding day, but like it goes by so fast. Really just like soak it all in. It's one day. Yeah. And if you think about it, it's anywhere from six to eight hours of the actual wedding day, you know, like, of course it's going to fly. So like, you know, feeling that, but that's why I put the buffers in the timeline. So you guys have time to, if we're late, it's okay. If you don't see me stressing out, you shouldn't be stressed. I rarely stress out. I know that's most people's response. And like, you probably don't even stress. And I'm like, I do. But at the end of the day, like, you know what? So we're off by five, 10 minutes. We'll figure it out, you know? But again, why are we yeah. off by five, 10 minutes? Because we create a timeline so that those problems don't happen. But that way you can also soak it in. If we have that extra time, you get extra pictures. Who doesn't want extra pictures? You know what I mean? Uh, you get that time to look at each other and say, hey, we're married, you know? Sometimes some people don't even get that. Like <laughs> the thing goes so fast that sometimes you don't even get that moment. And I think for the three of you, you did first look. Yeah. So for the three of you, you did first look. I have, I have to think back and remember each and every. Now how I did that, I can't even tell you because kids, I can barely remember anything that I do. But the three of you had first look. And so that's great. That gives you that extra time. And we should probably, probably should have answered that question, but we don't have time for that. But the importance and the benefit of doing first look really just kind of adds that ease to the day and and I know you guys can all agree because you did it. So thank you ladies so much for joining me. I wish I could chat with you guys forever about your weddings, but um, we got we to gotta cut this at this point. But thank you for joining me, for giving tips to these beautiful brides that are all having weddings, hopefully 2021 and 2022. So um, thank you.